kama kama Biblia yangu iko kwenye simu. Inua juu na useme this is my bible. This is my bible. Sema this is my bible. Sema this is my bible. A treasure God has given me. A treasure God has given me to guide me to heaven. To guide me to heaven. Now we want to say it better like we mean it. Say this is my bible. This is my bible. A treasure God has given me. A treasure God has given me to guide me to heaven. To guide me to heaven. So I have come to the house of God. And I will not go away empty. And I will not go away empty. Because God is going to speak to me. Because God is going to speak to me. God is going to lift me. God is going to lift me. God is going to address my needs. God is going to address my needs. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Karibisha mwenzako, mwambie you are blessed. You are blessed. Welcome to the word of God. 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 Amen. 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 I love Oasis of Glory Church in Mimili. Napenda kanisa la chemi chemi ya utukufu hapa Kimili. Because we teach the word. Maana tunafunza neno. And if there is any deliverance we can get in our lives is when we sit under the word of God. Na kama kuna ukombozi wote tunahitaji wakati tunakaa katika uwepo wa Mungu. Actually that's the best deliverance. Hakika hiyo ni ukombozi wa hakika. Just sitting under the word of God. Ukaa tu chini ya neno la Mungu. And when it is rightly being divided. Na kama lita gawanyishwa vizuri you just get your share Amen. unapata tu sehemu yako it speaks to you ninanena kwa if you are a sinner you say we to get saved that kama wewe ni sinner dhambi unajiambia tu unahitaji wao some people just go away as you yeah. listen but when you hear it they are not that to what you unasikiza neno so the difference is not when we go we are called in front kwa hivyo ukombozi sio tunapoitwa mbele and the hand hands are laid on us na tunawekewa mikono juu yetu and we fall down and rise up na tunaanguka tena tunaanguka not only that si hivyo tu the best deliverance is when we listen kombozi mzuri ni ule ambao tunaketi chini ya neno because the laying one of hands will pass away maana kuwekewa mikono kutapita but the word will never pass away lakini neno halitapita praise be to the lord so the word of god is important to us kwa hivyo neno la mungu ni la muhimu kwetu and it is the, the best the best thing that brings the deliverance in our lives na ni kitu bora sana ambacho kinaleta ukombozi katika maisha yetu so as i speak like this hivyo ninaponena hivi we are just challenging each other tunatiana tu moyo that we love the word kwamba tunapenda neno and we long for the word na tunatamani neno bwana sifue sana we long for the word tunatamani neno and we look for the word na tunatafuta neno and we love the word na tunapenda neno say amen say amen so today we want to bring the word of god kwa hivyo leo tunataka kuleta neno la mungu with my sister famous na Reverend Leonida we want to bring the word of God tunataka kuleta neno la Mungu are you going to receive the word of God je unaenda kupokea neno la Mungu are you going to receive the word of God unaenda kupokea neno la Mungu and i want to implore you to receive the word of God with meekness nataka nikukaribishe kupokea neno la Mungu kwa unyenyekevu and allow it to work on you na uliruhusu nikutendee kazi so that it can change you ili nikubadilishe so that you can evolve as a christian ili ukue kama mkristo bwana pendeka sema amen amen haleluya amen uh, for the last three days our uh, brother Margaret and I had a chance to be at heaven's gate nakuru kwa siku tatu ambazo zimepita eh, reverend leonida na Reverend Margaret wamekuwa heaven's gate kwa maombi we join a team of praying mothers to go and pray 
waliungana na kikundi cha wamama wa ombezi na wakaumba and uh, the experience cannot be explained na matokeo hayawezi kuelezeka when just two things we learned or i learned when i was there kuna tu mambo mawili walijifunza wakiwa kule one moja that a simple and humble man of god decides just to seek the lord kwamba mtu mtu tu rahisi na mnyenyekevu wa mungu anaamua kumtafuta mungu and i don't know how long he he stayed in the presence of god i just don't know na hata reverend haelewi ni muda gani mtu huyu wa mungu alichukua mbele za mungu and then god gives him an idea na mungu anampa wazo to go and buy some mountain hills to go and buy a mountain kwenda tu kununua mlima and then he comes up with a modern prayer center na anakuja na sehemu ya maombezi ya kisasa you know when i read there i remember the those days and when i remember you understand those of you who we walked together this christian walk you remember when we say we are going to pray in the forest it was a real forest <laughs> walipokuwa wanasema wanaenda kuomba msituni ilikuwa ni msituni hakika no house it was just a trees hakuwa na nyumba kulikuwa tu na nyasi na miti snakes and leopards and lions na nyoka na wanyama wale wakali wakali but this this mountain of the lord in 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 nakuru lakini mlima huu wa mungu kule nakuru na rete ile is this in game <laughs> alifika huko na kashangaa haya yako Kenya you just arrive and the, the whole place is tamed it has cameras and you are being received by the security for check up unafika tu unapata hiyo eh, sehemu imewekwa lami imetengenezwa vizuri na unakaribishwa vizuri and if you have a short dress they quickly give you a dress to tie because you don't go there with short dress na kama una nguo fupi wala kupatia haraka leso na kujifunga that's about all the way na nguo fupi that's what it's about all hiyo inanena kuhusu mpangilio if you have a trousers you in trousers you know we used to go to pray during kishas in the trousers but there because it's bringing everybody you don't go in a trousers huko unajua hapa tumezoea wakati tunakuja kesha tunavaa longi lakini huko hawaendi na longi <coughs> okay that may not be very important but I'm, I'm, it's just messiness me about the kind of order the man of god has put in that place hiyo haijalishi lakini kile ambacho kilimshangaza ni ule mpangilio ambao ulikuwa kule and then we saw the ghost streaming in na waliona magari yakimiminika families coming to pray to jamii zikija kuomba baba mama na watoto of all ages walika zote mothers with children were breastfeeding they also had come wa mama na watoto wale wa kunyonya pia wamekuja kuomba watu wote wa miaka 70 na nini pia walikuwa wanakuja kutafuta mungu that is what touched my heart hiyo mm. ndio ilikuza moyo wake and then now we enter into now the because that's just reception then we enter into we entered into now the the place where we were going to sleep where there's a chapel and where every activity takes place na walipoenda mahala pa kupumzika na mahala pa kustarehe huko na kanisa iko hapo na jumba what you never mesmerized me is that this man ngaza ni mtu huyu this man can turn a whole mountain into a modern facility mtu huyu anaweza kubadilisha mlima wote mpaka katika the rooms are like hotels the hotels even you see here viumba ni kama hoteli kubwa kubwa ambazo ziko katika mji huu wa kimilili and that chapel where we were meeting i don't know how we can turn it is it even meaningful na mahali ambapo walikuwa wanakutania peke yake palikuwa pana garimu 
And when we wake up in the morning to go for morning devotion, because it's mandatory, anyone who has come to the mountain, you attend, attend prayers from 5 p.m. to 8, 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. And then you go there, when you go to that hall, because it is ascending like this, and it's a capacity of over how many people? I can't really understand. That could be over 5,000 5, people. And the young and the old, everyone is there. And by 5, everyone is there. Then the doors are locked. And by 8, they would have been on top. When you go and you give a place and come in a moja, you want to want it. You want to want it. Jumuisha watu wengi. Kwa hivyo walikuwa wanaingia kina siku saa kumi na moja wanatoka saa mbili asubuhi. The Bible says in Psalms 42 verse 1, as a deer panted for the water. Mm -hmm. So my soul panted for me. Zaburi arubaina mbili. Kwa mba kama vile ayala anami utamani maji ya mito. Bivyo nafsi yangu inakuitaji. And it's just real as Kenyans are praying. Na akagundua ya kwamba wa Kenya wanaomba. There are people who are praying. Kuna watu wanaomba. The way we pray here in Oasis of Glory also tells where people are praying. Kama vile tunaomba maali hapa katika chemichemi ya utukufu, watu huku inje pia wanaomba. People are thirsting for God. Watu wanamuonea mungu kiu. People are seeking God. Watu wanamutafuta mungu. The second thing that amazed me. Jambo la pili lilio lilio mshika. Even people are not born again go to that center. Kama hata watu ambao hawaja wakoka uwenda. Why are they going to that center? Wameenda kufanya nini? Because they have had testimonies. Maana wamesikia shuhuda. Oh people who went there. Shuhuda za watu ambao wenda kwa. And they received their miracle. Na wakapokea ni ujiza. So they just go. Kwa hivyo wanaenda. And why are they there? Na wakiwa kule. They meet the salvation. Wanakutana na wakovu wa mungu. Because every time we will listen to the word of God. Mahana kila wakati walipo sikiza neno na mungu. They will make the, 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 the minister will always make an altar call. We have anybody who wants to get saved. And actually you see in 10th and 20th people are going to get saved. Mungu mchane ita wale ambao. They are not born again. Mudu muangeita wale ambao hawaja ogoka na wange mimimika kwa makumi ishirini wakienda kutafuta wogofu. And I hear the church is a clinic. Na akakundua ya kwamba kanisa ni mikama clinic. Mikama clinic. The house of God is for everybody. Nyumba ya mungu ni ya kila mtu. Let everybody come to the church. Let the drunkards come. Let the prostitutes come. Let everybody come. I don't sit under the word of God. Let the word of God change them. Because where will they have made salvation? Where will they have made salvation? And one pastor told us. Na mchungaji mmoja kawambia There is a mzee alikuwa kijabe hospital for a long time Kuna mzee alikuwa kijabe hospital kwa mda mrefu And the doctor said that pana wenda tu yubani mgojea Si mna juanga ukeangua mgojea Sina But haka sikia kwamba watu wanaidanga mdema fulani kuomba Ok And naka jiambia siniedeko tu wakwa mwokoka na kaenda Akaenda huko, akatoka. Akaenda huko, it was during COVID season. Akaenda huko, akatoka. Akaenda huko, wakati moja, nakasema wacha nikaa hapa for 21 days. Hapa mwokoka. Of course, asuguru napewa chani chiyo. Nakasema hii tu itanzaidia, 21 days. Na wakati huo hui mzee akakutana na mungu, akawokoka. Na wakati mzee alitoka hapo, akachukua madawa yake yote na kamusha na mungu akawokoka. Say amen. amen. I mean, God is a is not a is not a God of partiality. Mungu si mungu wa upendeleo. Ina tegeme tamani ya moyo wako. When I see you, son, tamani ya moyo wako. That's why Jesus reached to Zacchaeus and told him, "Shuka chini." And today, salvation has come to your house. Your man, Jesus, and the king of Zacchaeus and told him, "Shuka chini." Maana ukombozi umekuja katika nyumba yako. So people are thirsty. We mm. know what to wanna kill. And this is a challenge to us as the Church of Jesus Christ. Just to encourage people to come to church. 
kuvutia watu moyo waje kanisani and just come the way they are wacha tu waje vile walivyo who knows they might meet their miracle na wanajua kama wanaweza kuja wakapatana na muujiza wao hapa katika chemchemi they don't have to go to Nakuru hawahitaji kwenda kule Nakuru they just come to where god is waje tu mahali ambapo Mungu anapatikana and you believe god is in our sense of na je unaamini ya kwamba Mungu yuko mahali hapa you believe you can get your miracle from here je unaamini unaweza pata muujiza wako hapa let's give a hand clap tumpa Mungu mshauri there are many things we actually uh, encounter and uh, we thank God for that. Kuna mambo mengi sana. Vivian has been there. Kuna mambo mengi walikutana naye wakiwa kule. Anajua kuna baadhi yetu wamekuwa huko na wana ushuhuda. And I'm not saying that God is is only found at heaven's gate na kule. Asemi kwamba Mungu tu anapatikana kule heaven's gate na na kule. Because now that one will become a cult. Maana sasa hiyo itakuwa ni dini. I'm just saying that people are thirsting for God. Anasema kwamba watu move themselves from a normal life. Watu wanamuonea Mungu shauku na wanataka tu watoke katika hiyo hali ya mazoea. And they, they are going to pray. Na wanaenda kuomba. And they come all the way from Isipania. Na wanatoka sehemu mbalimbali kama huko Isipania. All the way from Tanzania we from Nombasa Mombasa na Kenya we from Tanzania Tanzania kule not to go to Shakahola but to go to a house Hawaii Shakahola lakini wanaenda katika mlima wa Bwana even in oasis of glory hata katika chemichemi ya utukufu the lives here Mungu anaishi hapa and we can get it as long as we are thirsty na tunaweza mpata iwapo tunamuonea shauku say amen amen So I want to conclude on a, a, a teaching I began two weeks ago. Hivyo tunataka kumalizia mafundisho ambayo tulianza majuma mawili yaliyopita. Why why should people travel all the way to seek the Lord? Kwa nini watu wasafiri kutoka mbali kumtafuta Mungu? Because they want to grow as Christians. Maana wanataka kukua kama wakristo. And that is the topic I began and I just want to conclude. Na hiyo ndio mada tulianzisha na anataka tu kuikamilisha. And we say personal growth is developing as an individual. Na tulisema kukua kwa kibinafsi ni kuendelea katika maisha yetu. It is so wrong uh, for you as a person to remain the same the same way you were two three years down the line. Ni mbaya so sana wewe binafsi kubaki vile ulikuwa miaka mbili tatu iliyopita huko. I say that personal growth includes you growing spiritual. Na tukasema ya kwamba kukua kwa kibinafsi kunahusisha kukua kwako wewe mtu binafsi. Physically, mentally, in all those areas we talked about. Kikawaida ki kimawazo na katika sehemu zote ambazo tulizima. And we say personal growth is impossible without God. Na tulisema ya kwamba kukua kwa kiroho hakuwezekani bila Mungu. You need God. Tunahitaji Mungu. And with uh, with God with God then you can spring up in all other areas. Tukiwa na Mungu tunaweza chipuka katika nyanja zingine. Tunapata ufanisi katika elimu, you gain a success in your career. Tunapata ufanisi katika kazi zetu, you, you gain success in your emotional growth. Tunapata eh, ufanisi kihisia zetu, in all areas, na katika sehemu zote. And then we used the example of Jesus. Na tukatumia mfano wa Yesu. Uh, to, to learn about personal growth kusoma kwa kukua kibinafsi and uh, i think i want to read those scriptures because those are the only ones i will read and then uh, we just discuss as the lord in our process please to soma maandiko hayo kama vile roho mungu atatuwezesha in luke chapter 2 luka mlango wa 2 and luke chapter 2 verses Tuan 
basi wazee wake huenda Yerusalemu kila mwaka wakati wa siku kuu ya Pasaka na alipopata umri wake miaka 12 walipanda kama ilivyokuwa desturi ya siku kuu na walipokwisha kuzitimiza siku wakati wa kurudi kwao yule mtoto Yesu alibaki nyuma huko Yerusalemu na wazee wake walikuwa hawana habari nao wakadhani ya kuwa yumo katika msafara wakaenenda mwendo wa kutwa wakawa wakimtafuta katika jamaa zao na wenzao na walipomkosa wakarejea Yerusalemu huku wakimtafuta ikawa baada ya siku tatu wakamwona hekaluni ameketi katikati ya walimu akiwasikiliza na kuwauliza maswali nao wote waliomsikia walistaajabu fahamu zake na majibu yake na walipomwona walishangaa na mama yake akamwambia mwanangu mbona umetutenda hivi tazama baba yako na mimi tulikuwa tukikutafuta kwa uzuni aka akawaambia kwani kunitafuta au kujua ya kuwa imenipasa wangu katika nyumba ya baba yangu nao hawakuelewa na neno hilo alilowaambia akashuka pamoja nao mpaka Nazareti naye alikuwa akiwatii na mamaye aliyaweka ali hayo yote moyoni mwake naye Yesu akazidi kuendelea katika hekima na kimo akimpendeza Mungu na wanadamu amen so those scriptures maandiko hayo they help us to understand the four dimensions the four areas uh, uh, Jesus uh, grew in yanatusaidia kuelewa pembe nne ambazo Yesu alikuwa and the last time we said number one, Jesus had a posture of growth jambo la kwanza tulisema ya kwamba Yesu alikuwa katika he was intentional about his growth alikusudia kukua you remember last Sunday we talked about intentional parenting amen nakumbuka jumapili iliyopita tulizungumzia kuhusu malezi ya kimakusudi did you learn something about it yes tulisoma kitu kuhusu malezi ya kimakusudi i also learned a lot mimi pia nilijifunza mengi so jesus was intentional about his growth kwa hivyo Yesu alikusudia kukua. And we say that this thing a recap because tulizungumzia maneno tukaruka sande moja so tunaweza kuwa tumesahau. Uh, I'm just going through it then we close up the pattern. Tunakumbishana tu na kisha tutamalizia. So he was intentional about growth. Kwa hivyo aliamua kukua. And he was not joking about it. Na hakuifanyia mchezo. Point number two, kipengele cha cha pili we say Jesus prioritized his areas of growth tulisema kwamba Yesu alitilia maanani sehemu yake ya kukua that's what verse 52 says and Jesus kept growing also he grew in wisdom ndiposa mstari wa 52 inasema ya kwamba Yesu aliendelea kukua alikuwa pia kwa sehemu ya ufahamu and stature na kawaida and favor na kibali with god ah kimpendeza mungu and man na wanadamu so this wisdom kwa hivyo kuna hekima and we talked about that na tuliongelea and stature that is physical growth and we talked about na hali ya kawaida na tuliongelea pia and in favor with god that is spiritual we talked about na katika kibali hiyo ni ya kiroho na tuliiongelea and with man we talked about relationships na 
kibinadamu pia tuliongelea kuhusiana na mahusiano Did you hear those points that Sunday? Yes. Say amen. Say amen. Yeah. So if Jesus was intentional about growing in his relationship with God,
na hisi huu ni ujumbe kutoka kwa Mungu. Tunataka tusikie ushuhuda kama huo. Kwamba nimekuwa nikisoma kitabu cha Ezra. Na haya ndio Mungu amenilenea. Lakini ushuhuda ambao tuko nao leo ni ushuhuda wa kifafa kwa maana neno la Mungu halimo ndani mwetu Yesu alitamani kukua na tifikiria tu alikuwa Mungu mwenyewe kwa kolosai ni mpendeza Mungu kwa sababu ndani mwa Yesu alikuwa Mungu mwenyewe na bado alitamani kuhusiana na Mungu. Haleluya. We can challenge ourselves. Tunaweza jichanganya. Be intentional. Na tuamue. And say I want to increase the scriptures. Na kusema nataka niongezeke kimaandiko. I want to increase my area of prayer. Nataka niongezeke kimaombi. Tomorrow we are beginning prayer and fasting. Kesho tunaanza maombi ya kufunga. You don't have to go to get come here and pray katika lango la mbinguni kuja hapa na uombe amuka katika nyumba yako na uombe there's a testimony that moved me kuna ushuhuda uliyomtia changamoto over lady who went to hospital and she was diagnosed with breast cancer eh wa mwanamke alienda hospitali na akagunduliwa kuwa na kanza ya matiti but because she knew what the word of god says na kwa sababu alijua lile neno la Mungu linasema kwamba kwa mapigo ya Yesu
and you are just in seclusion alone and you are not even shouting but you are groaning you are telling God I am defeated here I don't know what to do if you don't help if you don't come in, I don't know what to do. If you don't intervene in the situation of my son, I don't know what to do. God, I am just here. And you are my God. And I need you. Most prayers are done when you are alone. This woman did it. The testimony we are given is very short. You know, me, I'm putting in many things because I'm preaching. Mark knows. I'm just putting much is one thing. Is that what we say? I'm putting in many things. So this lady went after the four days. I don't know, but there were many days. So one night when she's asleep, she sees herself in a theater room. And the doctors were working on her breast. And that was a very long operation. A long operation. When she woke up, she found pass Uza. She got all over the bed. She wondered this is a this is a room for the prayer center. Akashanga na hii chumba cha maombezi. The sheets, you know, they are giving white sheets. The sheets are all white and now they are dirty. Uto uto wana pewa shuka nyope na sasa shuka zote zilikuwa zimechafuliwa na usa. She checked on her breast. There is nowhere. There is no cut. Akangalia kwenye titi lake hakuona alama yote ya kukato. So she just woke up. She went and washed the sheets. She aired them. Aliyafuka tu akaenda kuwasha breast. Shuka akanika na akatoka kwenye sehemu ya mwanzo. She went to the press and akaenda. Akatoka katika mlima ule wa maombi na akaenda. And you know, you need evidence that something has happened. Je, unajua unahitaji hakikisho kwamba kitu kimetendeka. So she went to those ones who had written her off and told her just to go home and begin to count days. Kwa hivyo alienda kwa wale ambao walikuwa wamemdhibitisha na to the doctors. Eh wale madaktari. And she went to Richards na akapitia katika uchunguzi breast cancer is not there amen eh ile ugonjwa wa kanza haukuwa because she had been in the theater umaana alikuwa katika zanati she was in the theater of god alikuwa katika upasuaji wa mungu there comes a time when we need to go amen to the theater of god kuna wakati ambao tunahitaji upasuaji wa mungu and in the theater of God, na katika upasuaji wa Mungu, there will be a change of our minds. Kuna kubadilika kwa mawazo yetu. There will be a change of our physical health. Kuna mabadiliko katika afya yetu. There will be a change of our economy. Kuna mabadiliko katika uchumi wetu. I wonder as I share this, na shangaa ninaposhiriki haya. What is God ministering to you? Mungu anakuhudumia nini? These things for us to get them, you must be intentional. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. You can be in the theater. Again, I want to At one time, wakati moja, I used to be troubled a lot with malaria typhoid. Malaria typhoid was not the mosquito. Typhoid was not the mosquito. The devil 
can also plan these things in our Shetani pia anaweza kupanda vitu hivi katika maisha yetu. And the journey was very long. I don't have to share about it. The journey was long. Mwendo ulikuwa mrefu sana. Very difficult. Na ulikuwa mgumu. One day, siku moja in my house in Umoja, Nairobi. Katika nyumba yake kule Umoja, Nairobi, I was asleep. Alikuwa amelala. And I was tired because it was I go to hospital it's either malaria or typhoid. Alikuwa amechoka maana kila alipoenda hospitali ilikuwa tu ni malaria ama typhoid. And I had been injected with 21 injections you nini nini mpaka the body was tired. Alikuwa amedungwa hizo shindani zote 21 madawa na mwili tu ulikuwa umechoka. Those bad drugs the green ones you know to say dawa mabaya hayo ya kijani kibichi ambayo mnayajua all those things hayo mambo hayo yote even with the, there are some hugs that treat typhoid they are going to be guraisi ni kwake hizo zote hata hizo me guraisi alikunywa even one time i forgot my begurao guraisi pastor had to pack in a box for me to receive us hata wakati mwingine alipokuwa akikuja huko akisahau pasta angeweza tu kuiweka kama kamuziko na anamtumia because this hubs god has also given them and they are doing powerful maana madawa haya pia Mungu ametupatia na yanafanya kazi kwetu but i want to share with you how god delivered me from this lakini anashiriki nazi kuhusu vile Mungu aliponya kutokana so na this night was a sleep kuna usiku huu ambao alikuwa amelala and i had a long dream i was in the theater of na akawa na doto refu alikuwa katika chumba cha upasuaji cha Mungu because I was wondering what is the cause of this maana alikuwa anashangaa chanzo cha hii ni nini I got it things of you of you when I'm traveling to yeye yeah, yeah, hakuli of you of you anaposafiri ana anajichunga vizuri I am so keen in my house I think I'm, I really value cleanliness ako makini sana na usafi katika nyumba yake so what is this kwa hivyo akashangaa hiyo nini. So that night, usiku huo, I see a very big snake. Akaona joka mkubwa. It came and tied itself on my hand and it was very big. Huyo joka akajifunga kwa mkono wake na alikuwa joka mkubwa. And I had a voice telling me na akasikia sauti ikimwambia you just hold the neck i don't know if there is a snake has a neck but you hold the neck so that the, the, the head where the mouth is doesn't bite so i held that akaambiwa ya kwamba mshike kabisa kwenye shingo lake hajui kama nyoka ana shingo lakini hivyo ndivyo aliambiwa it was very big na huyo joka alikuwa mkubwa and my hand is very small na mkono wake ni mdogo but it's like i was told na akaambiwa ya kwamba mshike kwa mkazo and then i saw poison uzi out na akaona ile sumu ya joka huyo ikitoka and ilikuwa na uzi na for a very long time ilikuwa inatoka na huo ulio kwa muda mrefu and then after uh, i had pressed it like that and it's like all the poison was out na alipomfinyilia hivyo na ni kama sumu yote ilikuwa imetoka i saw two ladies dressed in white like nurses akaona wanawake wawili wamevalia nguo nyeupe kama madaktari they came with injections wakaja na sindani then one said na mmoja akasema i this i think this poison has na, spilled over her body and even her hand that's what we said wakati mmoja akasema nafikiri hii sumu imemrukia kwa mkono wake na mwili wake so let us in, let us uh, give her some injection to neutralize na wakasema wacha tumdunge hii sindani ili iyeyushe remember i'm still holding the snake kumbuka alikuwa bado ameshikilia huyo joka so they tell me to stretch my hand kwa hivyo wakamwambia anyoshe mkono wake and it was not this hand it was this hand where the snake is haukuwa mkono wa wa kulia ulikuwa ni wa kushoto so they began to inject kwa hivyo wakaanza kumdunga 
And the snake just left itself. Na yule joka akamwachilia. Then, then I woke up. Na akaamka. That is the that was the last time I ever suffered from this demon called typhoid. Na huo ndio ulikuwa wakati wake wa mwisho kuweza kuwa na magonjwa ya typhoid. Please be to the Lord. I was in the theater of God. Alikuwa katika chumba cha upasuaji cha Mungu. And God, God was telling me that these sicknesses are not the normal mosquitoes or the dirty water. They have come from hell. That's why the, that is why the snake came and tied itself around my hand. Na Mungu alikuwa anamwambia magonjwa haya si ya Mungu wala uchafu, lakini yametoka kwa shetani. Ndiyo maana yule joka alikuwa amejifunga kwa mkono wake. Na hivyo ndivyo Mungu alivyokuomboa. Praise be to the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Praise be to the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. You must be intentional. Lazima ukusudie. You must be intentional. Lazima ukusudie. You must be intentional. Lazima ukusudie. Hiyo sifa sana. Eh the sickness bothered me so much. Na ningetoka shule nilikuwa nafunza Dandora Second School. Alijua akitoka itagarimu mkono wa Mungu. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. Say amen. amen. Say I must be in I must be in touch. Sema ni lazima nikusudie. Sema nitakusudia. Niwaambie waambie. Sema nitakusudia. Nitakusudia. Tena nitakusudia. Amen. It has to be Lazima hiyo ilimakusudi. You reduce unapungua I mean you, be, you reduce all the begging for prayers. <laughs> Unajua kwa kuomba. Or sending other people to pray for you. Ama kutuma watu wengine wa kuombe. As you go please pray for me. Unawaambia mnapoenda tafadhali uniombe. That is okay. Hiyo ni sawa. I also tell people to pray for me. Yeye pia huambia watu wa Mungu. Lakini pia ninapofanya hivyo nataka nikusudi. Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana asifiwe sana. Haleluya. I have, I don't have to spend so much time on that but let's move on to number three. Jesus impressed that is the, now the third point we did not say. Jesus impressed practices for growth. Yesu alikumbatia hatua za kukua practices for growth that's okay hatua za kukua in verses 46 and 47 mstari wa 46 na 47 we read that tulisoma kwamba yes god the 46 and 47 we read that When his parents saw him they were astonished his mother said son why have you treated us like this your father and I have been anxiously searching for you Wazazi wake walipomuona wakamuuliza kwamba mbona umetuteza hivi mimi na baba yako tumekuwa tukikutafuta And he answers in verse 49 he says why were you searching for me as did you know did you know I have to be in my father's house. Akawaambia kwani tulitafuta? Hamkujua ya kuwa imenipasa kuamwa katika nyumba ya baba yangu. He embraced practices for growth. Alikumbatia hatua za kukua. In those verses there are three things we get there. Katika maandiko haya kuna vipengele vitatu tu ama mambo matatu tunayapata. Actually if you begin from verse 46 which I skipped it okay. says after three days they found him in the temple court sitting among the teachers listening to them and asking them questions. Katika mstari wa 46 inasema ikawa baada ya siku tatu wakamuona Nikaluni ameketi katikati ya waalimu akiwasikiliza na kuwauliza maswali. And you know everyone was surprised and impressed that a 12 year old boy na kila mtu alishangaa 
kwamba mtoto wa miaka 12 had deep understanding and could answer questions alikuwa na ufahamu wa ndani sana na angejibu maswali with such wisdom na eh, na hekima kuu so three things from those scriptures mambo matatu katika maandiko haya Jesus had a place to grow Yesu alikuwa na mahali pa kukua that was the temple ilikuwa ni hekalu he had a place to grow alikuwa na mahali pa kumsaidia kukua and i want to thank god that we have a place to grow nataka kumshukuru mungu kwamba tuko na mahali pa kutusaidia kukua oasis of glory church is our place to grow kanisa la chemichemi ya utukufu ni mahali petu pa kukua and then you do have grown as long as you have kept yourself in contact with this church wengi wetu tumekuwa wakati tumehusiana na kanisa hili you can never grow if you're not in the environment of growth hauwezi kukua kama hauko katika mazingira ya kukua are we together yeah. praise be to the lord Amen. jesus valued the temple Yesu alidhamini hekalu. So for us to grow we shall value the environment to grow. Kwa hivyo kwetu kukua tunatakiwa kudhamini mazingira ya kukua. That's why Sunday is a very important day. Ndio maana Jumapili ni siku ya maana sana kwa kwa muumini. We do everything to come to church. Tunafanya kila juhudi kukuja kanisani. We live all other commitments. Tunaacha shughuli zingine. We want to attend to all the church programs. Tunataka tuhusike katika program yote ya kanisa. Because those programs make us grow. Kwa sababu mpangilio huo unatufanya tunakuwa. Praise be to the Lord. Amen. He had a place to grow. Alikuwa na mahala pa kukua. I want to encourage us. Nataka tutiwe moyo that we keep in touch with places or environments that can help us grow. Kwamba tuwe na uhusiano wa karibu na mahala na sehemu ambazo zinatuchochea kukua. Now that Jesus had people to grow. Eh jambo la pili Yesu alikuwa na watu wa kumsaidia kukua. The religious leaders. Viongozi wa kidini. Praise to the Lord. And God has given us na Mungu ametupa people who can help us to grow in our spiritual growth with him. Watu ambao wanaweza kutusaidia kukua kiroho na yeye. They could be the contemporaries. Wanaweza kuwa ni wale wako katika maeneo yako au umri mmoja na wewe. They, could, they can be your fathers and mothers in the faith wanaweza kuwa ni baba na mama wako wa kiimani in our so glory we have our pastors katika chemichemi la utukufu tuko na mchungaji wetu ama wachungaji wetu we have leaders of various ministries tuko na viongozi wa huduma mbalimbali we have fellowships tuko na shirika all those things put together they help us vitu vyote vikiwekwa pamoja vinatusaidia kukua so you need people to grow kwa hivyo tunahitaji watu kukua you cannot just say that my salvation is kimoyo moyo you need people to grow hauwezi tu kusema kwamba wokovu wa ni wa kimoyo moyo tunaweza ya kwamba siendi kanisani nitakaa tu kwa nyumba niangalie runinga yangu ama nisikize redio yangu hapa Jesus is our Lord model kama Yesu ni mtu wetu wa kutazama we shall be excited when Jumapili comes and we run to church tunaweza kufurahia na kukumbatia siku ya Jumapili na kuja kanisani and we will be uh, we, uh, we will maintain our relationship with our spiritual leaders na tutatumisha uhusiano wetu na viongozi wetu wa kiroho number three, jambo la tatu jesus had a process to grow yesu alikuwa na hatua za kukua the bible says he was in the temple questioning and listening biblia inasema alikuwa kwenye hekalu akisikiza na kuuliza maswali. If you to grow you should be someone who engages people. Ni kama unataka kukua inatakiwa uwe mtu wa kuhusisha watu. You are in an environment where you listen number one. 
huko katika mazingira ambayo kwanza unasikiza listen to what others are saying sikiza amba, mambo ambayo watu wengine wanasema questions na pia uliza maswali where you don't understand mahali ambapo hauelewi vizuri so jesus will listen to the religious leaders and then he will also ask questions kwa yesu angesikiza mafundisho ya walimu wa dini na kisha angeuliza maswali he valued that alidhamini hayo bwana sikue sana and you'll be able to go. na utaweza kukua yeah because uh Oasis of glory is not a cow. So people must ask questions. Na kwa sababu chemichemi ya utukufu sio tu dini mbovu tunaruhusiwa kuuliza maswali. It's only in cards that it that the, the, the pastor or the spiritual leader knows everything. Ni dini tu za upotovu ambazo eh makuhani tu ndio wanaongea kila kitu. And they would tell you don't question a pastor. Na wanawaambia msiwe na maswali kwa watu. Don't ask many questions. Ha, msiulize maswali mengi. But if you want to grow, lakini kama unataka kukua, you have to listen. Ni lazima eh, usikize. And when you don't understand, that's why Bible study is very important. When you don't understand, mahali ya maswali na uelewi ni vizuri kuuliza maswali. Bwana asifiwe sana. Those three things the, the, the Jesus had a process to go. Can you imagine if you read this uh, Luke chapter 2, naposoma Luke 2. Look at the process Jesus is going through as he grows. Angalia hatua ambazo Yesu alipitia anapokuwa. And when you read the gospels, na unaposoma injili, you realize that uh Jesus is not so public with his life. Unagundua ya kwamba Yesu pia alikuwa hadharani na watu. He was not so public with his life. Eh, maisha yake pia yalikuwa hadharani. He was not uh how could you dikana he was not public. How could you dikana watu hawakumjua for about 30 years. Sio kweli. For about 30 years what happened? Kwa miaka 30 Yesu hakujulikana. What was happening in those 30 years? Ni nini kilikuwa kinafanyika kwa miaka hizo 30? He was growing. Alikuwa akikua. Growing in wisdom. Kukua kihekima. He was growing in knowledge. Alikuwa anakua kiufahamu. He was growing in relationship with people. Alikuwa akikua katika mahusiano na watu. He was growing in relationship with God. Alikuwa akikua katika mahusiano na Mungu. And then now when he gets into the mission field. Na sasa hata anapofika katika uwanja wa huduma, he has already mature. Tayari amekoma. And that is why the Bible says at 30 years is when Jesus does ministry. And he did this ministry in only three years. Is it three? Ndio maana Biblia inasema ya kwamba kwa miaka 30 ndipo Yesu alianza huduma na alifanya tu huduma kwa miaka mitatu but just see the impact lakini ona tu matokeo that impact is as a result of the 30 years e, matokeo inaashiria hizo miaka 30 za maandalizi bwana asifiwe sana so sometimes we fail to grow kwa hivyo wakati mwingine tunakosa kukua because we are not placed ourselves in a growth environment. Kwa sababu hatujajiweka katika mazingira ya kukua. Sometimes we fail to grow wakati mwingine hatukui because we think we are the smartest people. Kwa sababu tunafikiria sisi ni watu wazuri sana. And so we are not intentional about growing. Kwa hivyo hatukusudii hatuna umakini wa kukua. And the last point the fourth point na kipengele cha mwisho ambacho ni cha nne Jesus knew the purpose of his growth Yesu alielewa maana ya kukua kwake So when he is asking questions and he is listening wakati anauliza maswali na kusikiza he knew his purpose he knew why God had sent him alijua makusudi yake kwa nini Mungu alimtuma So when the parents are asking Sir, why have you caused to travel to us? We've been looking for you. Ndio maana wakati wazazi wanamuuliza mwana, "Mbona umetutaabisha hivi? Tumekuwa tukikutafuta." He says, 
akasema Why did you need me to look for me? Why did you look for me? Mbona mnitafute? Did you know that I was I must be in my father's house. Hakukujua kwamba imenibidi imenilazimu kuwa katika nyumba ya baba. Another version says I must be working for my father. Eh nakala nyingine inasema ninahitajika ama nalazimika kutumika katika nyumba ya Mungu. That is verse that is uh, verse 49. Huo ni mstari wa 49. Joseph and Mary never knew the purpose. Jesus Maria na Yusufu hawakuwahi kuelewa kazi ama majukumu ambayo Yesu alikuwa amekuja kutimiza. But Jesus himself knew. Lakini Yesu mwenyewe alijua. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. Do we understand the purpose of our lives? Je unaelewa umuhimu ama majukumu ya maisha yako Jesus understood that the preparation he was going through was to fulfill the mission God had set him to accomplish Yesu alijua ya kwamba maandalizi yote ambayo alikuwa anapitia yalikuwa yatimize malengo ya yeye kutumwa katika ulimwengu So that is why in, in, in his early years the scriptures are so silent about Jesus. Ndio maana katika miaka zake za mwanzo mwanzo Biblia imenyamaza sana. We only hear him now when he's going public to be baptized by John the Baptist. Tunamsikia wakati anaenda kubatizwa na Yohana Mbatizaji. And then from the water is driven he is I mean the spirit of God comes upon him and then he begins to speak. Alipotoka kwa maji roho alipo eh, kutoka kwa maji roho wa Mungu akamjia juu yake na akamtia upako. Do we understand the purpose of our lives? Tunaelewa maana ya maisha yetu. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. Do we understand why we are born again? Je, tunaelewa ni kwa nini tumezaliwa mara ya pili? We understand why we are children of God. Unaelewa kwa nini e, wewe ni mwana wa Mungu? Do you understand what you need to fulfill on earth as a student? Je, unaelewa majukumu ambayo unafaa kuyatimiza kama mwanafunzi katika e. You know your purpose is the reason why you wake up in the morning. It is the reason why you wake up in the morning. Ndio sababu majukumu yako ndio sababu ya wewe kuamka kila asubuhi. If you have no purpose for life, kama hauna majukumu katika maisha, then we are just drifting. Tunasukumwa tu. We are just drifting in Christianity. Tunasukumwa tu katika wokovu. We are in our in our, for those who are students, we are just drifting. Tunasukumwa tu kule shuleni katika elimu yetu. But you know if you have a purpose, lakini kama una malengo, it will guide you life decisions itakuelekeza katika maamuzi ya maisha yako it will influence your behavior itadhiri tabia zako it will shape your goals itachonga eh, hatima yako and it will offer you a sense of direction na itakupa hisia za mwelekeo say amen. amen i want to finish like this ningependa kumaliza hivi You know that the lamb is the king of the jungle. Unajua ya kwamba Simba ni mfalme wa jangwani. Yet the lamb was not born with the development skills. Lakini Simba haku hakukuwa hakuzaliwa hakuzaliwa na Eh, yeah, ujuzi okay. ujuzi ambao hapo nao yes simba hakuzaliwa na huo ujuzi to be the king of the jungle hakuzaliwa na ujuzi wa kuwa mfalme wa jungle the lion learns those skills by and by simba hujifunza ujuzi huu siku baada ya siku they have to work at it yeah. Ah, ni lazima aifanyishe aifanyie kazi and it takes at least two years na ichukue eh, kama miaka miwili hivi to fully develop as the king of the jungle kuweza kuhitimu kabisa kama mfalme 
For us to make a difference wherever we are. Ili tufanye mabadiliko popote ambapo tuko. We must work at ourselves. Lazima tujifanyie kazi. And this one takes time. Na pia tuchukue muda. We have to decide on what we want to become. Lazima tuamue tunataka tuwe nini. Mbili, lazima tuamue sisi tunataka tuwe na I want to grow spiritually. Kwamba nataka nikuwe kiroho. I want to grow physically. Nataka nikuwe kikawaida. And then at time we say if you don't take care of your health, you need to have that. Tunasema usiposhughulikia afya yako utazieka mapema. You will expire early. Utalifika mapema hata unaweza kufa. So you have to work at it. Kwa hivyo lazima uishughulikie. You have to work at your intellectual power. Lazima ushughulikie hali yako ya kimawazo. Otherwise you cease to be rele- re- relevant in the world today. La sivyo eh, hauta hautakuwa mtu leo. And you see, can you read the books? Can you listen to messages? Can you do everything? Yaani it is so that you are sema I want to be relevant as a young person. I want to be relevant as a mother. I want to be relevant as a father. That's intention. Ni kukusudia like the lion in the jungle kama simba jangwani if you have a purpose kama una kama una lengo katika maisha it will be bothering you itakushughulisha and you be asking yourself what next can i do na utajiu utakuwa unajiuliza hatimaye nifanye nini bwana asitoe sana bwana asitoe sana do we want to be relevant je tunataka ku because the, the, the audience today the believers today they are people who are well read they are reading they read wanasikiza neno wamesikiza mambo mengi na wanafanya mambo mengi wanaofahamu mwingi so when you stand before people kwa hivyo unaposimama mbele ya watu they want to they hear you the first five minutes wanataka wakusikize kwa dakika za kwanza tano they see are you making sense wanaona eh, unaleta kitu and you know in big congregations we just see people starting to leave na unajua katika umati mkubwa utaona tu watu in other words they are saying i think i've heard about that kwa maneno mengine wanasema eh, ni kama nimesikia hiyo i don't think there's anything new So even for preachers like us. Kwa hivyo hata kwa wa, wa, wa hudumu kama sisi. We are being challenged. Tunatiwa changamoto. To continue growing so that we are above the congregation. Kuendelea kukua ili tuwe juu ya umati. Say amen. Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I was following some on Facebook I was following a certain eh, Facebook page katika mtandao alikuwa anafuatilia page fulani and there is a minister that uh, advertised for a big meeting to heal the land to heal you know heal the land na kuna huduma ambayo ilitangaza mkutano mkubwa wa kuponya nchi so I was following the comments na alikuwa anafuatilia zile so i saw one comment that was very interesting na akaona eh, eh, comment moja ambayo ilimpendeza someone writes like this mtu anaandika hivi i have attended so many meetings about healing the land nimehudhuria mikutano mingi sana za uponyaji i have listened to many tips about the same nimesikiza jumbe nyingi kuhusiana na hiyo can you convince me that this meeting will be different from the rest unaweza kunishawishi kwamba mkutano huu utakuwa tofauti na mikutano in other words they are saying kwa maneno mengine wanasema that ministers we need to be above the audience. Kwamba wahudumu tunafaa tuwe juu so we are, we are seeking for the fresh anointing. Kwa hivyo tunatafuta eh, ile upako fresh. I wonder which of the four dimensions we have talked about. 
I am wondering of the four dimensions we have talked about. Na shanga ni na shanga katika zile pepe nne za kukuwa bazo tumezionyelea. Which one can you? Then in the whole of this week, you can take in prayer and tell God, I want to grow spiritually. I want to grow in uh, mentally. I want to grow in these areas. Which are these areas you can take and run with them throughout this week and tell God, God, I'm intentional. Nataka unishugulikie hapa. Nataka unishugulikie hapa because I am wanting. Katika hizi pepe nne ambazo tumejifunza na hizi vipengele vyote vya kukua katika juma hili la maombi ambalo tunaanza ni kipengele kipi ambacho utachukua na ukimbie nacho katika wiki hili umwambie Mungu ninataka unisaidie ni kuwe katika sehemu hii ni kuwe kiroho ni kuwe kimaisha kimahusiano ni sehemu ipi lazima ukusudie binafsi that can only happen na hiyo tu inaweza kufanyika if you have a purpose. Kama umeamua uko na lengo. Find out do you have a purpose as the year comes to an end. Je, angalia una lengo mwaka unapoelekea kuisha. Have you found something that defines you uniquely? Ume, unaweza pata kitu ndani mwako ambacho kinakufanya kuwa tofauti and begin the journey na uanze safari to grow in that area. Ya kukua katika sehemu hiyo. We say that uh, personal growth begins with the Lord. Tunasema ya kwamba eh, kukua kwa kibinafsi kunaanza na Mungu. Without God, bila Mungu you can't grow. Hauwezi kukua. Without God, bila Mungu you can't accomplish it. Hauwezi kutimiza jambo lolote. Without Lord. God, bila Mungu you don't care una issue of your view. without god bila mungu you not have good relationships with people hautakuwa na uhusiano mzuri na watu without god bila mungu you cannot plan for your life hauwezi kuwa na mpangilio wa maisha yako but with god in our lives lakini tukiwa na mungu katika maisha yetu our lives find meaning in him maisha yetu yanapata maana ndani mwake so we need to close our eyes and we make a prayer tufunge macho tunapomba maybe you are here labda uko hapa and you are not born again na haujaokoka and we are saying na tunasema without god bila mungu you cannot start the journey of spiritual growth hauwezi kuanza safari ya kukua kiroho and without god na bila mungu all other areas cannot be effective sehemu zingine haziwezi kuadiliwa you are here and you are not born again uko hapa na hujaokoka and you want to give your life to Jesus unataka kupeana maisha yako kwa Kristo maisha ya mkono naweza ikamkono juu unaweza inua mkono wako so that we pray for you ili kwamba tukuombe remember we say the church is for everybody kumbuka tulisema kanisa ni la kila mtu and we want every Sunday to be giving a chance to people to give na tunataka kila jumapili tupeane nafasi ya watu kupeana maisha yao kwa Kristo you are not and you want to begin with God eh haujaokoka na unataka kupeana maisha yako kwa Kristo yeye uko hapa unaweza inua mkono wako kama unataka wokovu kama unataka kuombewa wokovu kuna mkono pale Okay just uh, that's nice you can uh, follow that hand and stand up inapendeza sana unaweza fuata huo mkono uinuke juu na tuombe pamoja Mungu atakusaidia Mungu atakusaidia inuka tu wapendwa inuka tu tuombe pamoja Nimeinua to encourage because uh, uh, we want to encourage tunataka kuatia moyo It's a good thing to give your life to Christ. Ni jambo la muhimu sana kupeana maisha yako kwa Kristo. And I want to give this chance to our senior pastor. Na nataka kupeana nafasi hii kwa mchungaji wetu mkuu to be able to pray for this young people. Just come. Kuweza kuombea hawa vijana waje mbele tuombe. Kujeni mbele. Just 